Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about how can we deal with this course error.、Uh, if you try to send AJAX request from your view application to another application,、uh, you have probably seen this error. And there are different ways to handle this error. Some of them are more complicated. Some of them are involved with some server configuration. But today I'm going to talk about one method, one simple method that you can apply only for development, and it、uh, can be handled right inside your view application. If you guys prefer Uh, text content rather than watching videos. I just provide an article on this topic. You, can, I will link it below. You can just read this article. It's the exact same content. Go ahead and read it. Skip the video. But if you prefer watching the video, just keep watching. Okay, what is course? Actually, a browser、uh, protects web application to interact only with apps. That are from the same origin. That means、uh, that they have the same domain. It's for、uh, application security sake,、uh, but in development, actually, it's a problem. I will link this article below. It's from Code Academy. It has a complete、uh, description and every, it tells everything you need to know about cars.、Uh, it's not、uh, something that we're going to talk about on this video.、Uh, we just want you to know that when do you see this error?、Uh, for example, here I have a view application I just created with Create View. And、uh, here's a fresh application. I just installed Axios so that I can make AJAX calls. And I have one other application running、uh, by my Apache. It's a Laravel application. It provides、uh, an API that I can make an AJAX call to and get some data. So here I import Axios first. And here, inside methods, I just create a fetch method, and this fetch method is making a get AJAX request to our API,、uh, which is running on my machine.、Uh, to run this method, I will run it when the Component is created. Okay, guys, you can see that we are getting this ugly error that tells、uh, the request has been blocked by Core's policy. So here, just take a look.、Uh, this HTTP local host. Uh, 80 on port 8080 is my front end domain, and my back end domain is yasna-core.js, and it's obviously they're not the same. That's the natural behavior of the、uh, browser to block these kinds of requests.、Uh, you can run your browser with some flags that. Disables this policy,、uh, but it's not safe because all of these policies are for our security sake. So it's better not to do that. And I, I just try to add some configuration to HDXs of the backend projects, but not always. We have access to the backend project to、uh, manipulate its、uh, server configurations. Hopefully, Vuecli has a very simple solution for these types of errors.、Uh, you just need to go ahead to Vuecli documentation under config reference. Here、uh, you can see that we can have a view.config.js. By the way, I'm using Vue CLI 3. Vue CLI 2 might be different. If you're familiar with the system of the Vue CLI, it's creating a, a server for you when you just type the command npm run serve. It just creates a, a server for you. 
that runs the application on and it's using Node.js and Webpack. So for adding configuration to uh, Node.js, you need to uh, add some configuration to the Webpack. But you can see in Vue CLI 3, there is no webpack.config file here. So we need to create a file named view.config and the file should be in the root of your project beside uh, package.json and create a JS file called viewconfig.js. Okay, the file is empty, but we should add a module exports to it. Inside this module export, uh, we have a dev server property. It's an object. And uh, this dev server, actually, let's just go ahead and search for proxy. This dev server gives us access to Webpack dev server. Uh, but right now, we just want to go ahead and use something called proxy. Okay. In the cases when you have your backend application running on another server in another host, uh, you can do a trick. Instead of writing the domain of the backend uh, application, you can just go ahead and write your front-end domain here in your Ajax call. And instead, you will tell the view if uh, you're, you're telling the view CLI that if uh, any of the requests I made are not uh, pointing to a static existing root inside the application, just map it into here. So here I just write the FJF. Okay. The proxy comes between your application and your, your front-end application and your back-end, and it will somehow map this URL to where the main URL your, your back-end application is running on. To see the changes, we just need to run our application once again. So I terminate the serving and just serving once again. Ta-da! Here is the success message and here is the result. So let's take a look at the request itself. You can see that request has been made to the same domain that our front-end application is, but the proxy is actually handling it. I highly recommend to store these URLs, even this base URL of your AJAX call in a, uh, in a .env uh, file somewhere here, because um, these are the values that might be different on different system. It's will be different in production. So try to keep them separately so you can just change them from one place. Uh, I just want to thank my supervisor, Taha Komkar, for providing this API. And um, thank you for watching. See you next time.